MG was on a tear for 2019, releasing models left and right like the MG ZS and the MG5. But I have a favorite. What if you wanted an MG car that's larger, more refined, and even a little bit sportier? I'm gonna show you this car, and I'm gonna tell you why it's the perfect car for you, and why I think it's the perfect compact car out there with one major flaw. What's going on guys? It's your boy Leroy and this is the all new MG6. It's MG's contender in the compact car segment going against the likes of the Honda Civic, Toyota Corolla Altis, and even the Hyundai Elantra. Does it have what it takes to stand against these guys? We're gonna take it for a spin, take a look at the inside and the outside, and I'm gonna tell you why this can be your next car. Starting off with the exterior of the MG6, there are a couple of things up front that I find quite interesting. First of all, this grill. It's dominated by this large MG grill in the front. What it does is that it covers this camera in the front that uh, helps you with parking. So it has parking cameras on the front and in the rear. We'll find that out later. Uh, this silver chin at the bottom adds more contrast and flair to the front end. But what ruins it for me is are these uh, side panels. Look at these, look at these side panels. These are fake vents supposed to have holes in them but they don't they don't go anywhere but they accent this large carbon fiber like material up front and these LED turn signals uh, I think it's kind of tacky but you do you MG one thing that's really interesting about the front end is this, are these headlamps the headlamps are these LED projector type headlamps on the top of the line trophy variant which this MG6 is. It's got this long front end, making it even more sporty. So that's pretty much I can say everything I can say about the front end, and it's really great. The overall look of the MG6 may get some inspiration from more popular compact cars. The front end would come from a Mazda. The rear, I'll show you the rear. The rear would come from a Mercedes-Benz, but take a look at the profile. The side profile of the MG6 kind of reminds you of the BMW Grand Sport. It's a fastback. It adds more sportiness to it with the 18-inch mag wheels. One thing that breaks the monotony of the side panels are these silver linings that, are, uh, that trim and adorn the windows. And these uh, grab handles are adorned in silver as well. So why else would you put something that says performance in it underneath a trim with fake vents? But let's take a closer look at those wheels. There are 18-inch alloy wheels which are machined. They're 225, 45, R14, or R18, I'm sorry. You see how massive these, these wheels are? They're 18 inches. So uh, it adds sportiness, like I said, sportiness and elegance with how the MG6 moves. I think that the rear of the MG6 doesn't look half bad. I mean, it does find inspiration from other compact cars, especially in the rear. Kind of reminds you of a Mercedes-Benz. These tail lamps, LED tail lamps for a fact, remind you of the Mercedes-Benz compact cars of today. We got this large MG badge right here, but underneath, you're gonna feature this rear backup camera, which is helpful. This car is kind of huge. Well, huge for a compact car. Now, underneath the MG6 is more, uh, more of that tackiness that I was talking about earlier. You see, it has these vents as well that act like, uh, like exhaust tips, but the exhaust tips are actually underneath it. So you think this may be exhaust tips, but they're not. They're actually underneath it, and you can barely see it from the outside, but only if you look underneath. Now, take a look at the interior. This is probably the best part of the MG6. You don't find this in many cars these days. It's a fastback design where the whole rear opens up like a big hatch. I mean, it's kind of similar with how the Honda Civic looks, but with the Honda Civic, just the boot opens up. But with this, even the rear windows open up to reveal this space at the back. 
The space at the back doesn't really hold that much uh, room in it. But if you remove this tonneau cover and fold the seats down, <laughs> that's a lot of space inside. Stepping inside the MG6, I have to pace myself because there's a lot to tell. First thing that's going to greet you, the steering wheel. The steering wheel is leather wrapped and it's got this large MG badge in the middle. But check this out, it's flat bottom. So uh, it adds more to that sporty theme that I was talking about earlier. But one thing that's going to take your eyes off of the steering wheel is all this red leather. The interior is all red with black uh, contrasting on the side and red stitching. The 8 inch touchscreen is interesting because it, it's devoid of any physical buttons which I personally don't like but it has capacitive buttons which, uh, which definitely works for now. Heading over to the gauge panel there is another TFT screen up front shows different information about your car. Pressing the OK button on the steering wheel there's a digital speedometer in the middle if you find it difficult to read the speedometer on this side. That's basically it for that. Underneath the dual zone automatic climate control, you have two USB ports for your media and a 12 volt socket. That should be enough to charge all your devices. Let's head over to the uh, one more interesting part about the interior of the car, the sunroof. Uh, it's covered right now, but you can easily slide this open and then with a flick of a button, you get fresh air coming inside the vehicle. Now, how swanky is that? I would probably wish that this would be at the back of the car so that anyone who's partying at the back can just go, woo, hello Manila. But you can't do that here unless you want to do this, but that's not happening. Let's just close that right back out. It's kind of hot outside. You can't close that, uh, close this panel until the glass hatch is completely closed. This armrest, inside the armrest, you see, it's cold inside. It's a refrigerated uh, cubby hole. You could put all your cold drinks inside and they'll stay cold. The front seat, the front passenger seat is uh, adjustable electronically. So you can slide down or go up like this and then go down. You can reach your optimum driving position by just pushing this buttons right here. And the steering wheel is adjustable for both reach and rake. So if you want to go all boy racer mode, as I'm going to do later on, you can just put the steering wheel up, put the seats down, recline, and you're doing the Honda Bro Lean on an MG. Okay, okay, wow. The rear seats are what are called the business end of any compact car because compact cars are meant to be passenger cars. So uh, it doesn't matter if the front is comfortable or not, but your passengers are basically in purgatory. But on the MG6, this is pretty swanky in the back. Hey, this is my optimum sitting position right here, but even though I'm sitting behind it, I still find myself really comfortable. Look at all the leg room right here. There's, there's inches, not just inches, I think there's a whole foot right there from my knees up to the uh, driver's seat. And my foot, my feet aren't scrunched up underneath the seat as well. There's a lot of legroom. In fact, this is going to be my new seating position at the back while, uh, while I lounge around. There are no cup, oh wait, there are cup holders. Check this out. That's full lounge mode. I could put my chocolate milk drink right here and just settle down. Uh, it's really a good place to be at the back. I really wish that that rear sunroof would be right here and then I can go all out what's up Manila but it's not so it's up front so sucks for me one more thing it's got rear louvers rear air con vents I mean how cool is that literally how cool is that I think this is gonna be my new favorite seating position here yep everyone else can just you know grab that vouch position here to the sides I'll be more than happy to sit in the front and that shouldn't be a problem. Three people sitting abreast at the back won't have any problem seating in the MG6. They got their own headrests. And uh, hey, I think that the rear has more, uh, more, more headroom here. 
yeah, maybe it's just me or I don't know. But I can, my, my full frame, my full torso can actually fit in the back without having to scrounge, you know, here on the side. So I think overall the rear seats are a good place to be. Oh, one more thing. I have to mention this. This car, uh, if you're worried about passenger safety, that shouldn't be a problem. It's got everything. It's got electronic brake distribution, it's got hill start assist, it's got traction control, and it's got four airbags, two for each passenger up front and driver included, and two uh, for curtain airbags. So definitely gonna be a safe thing. And that's it for the rear. Let's see how this drives. Setting off in the MG6 with its 1.5 liter turbocharged engine that makes 166 horsepowers and 215 newton meters of torque. It has great insulation inside. The NVH levels are amazing. And I actually tried off some other cars in this class, but uh, this actually bests them all. If you compare this to the Honda Civic, Toyota Corolla, and the Hyundai Elantra, Fuel economy is just right. Uh, we were able to test this around town and you get around six to seven kilometers per liter. But that, that would probably be my fault because I was enjoying myself too much in driving the MG6. You got these white font gauges that uh, go against the black background. But if you put it in sport mode, it all changes. Oh, damn. Bluetooth works, as you can see. Yeah. Hello, how you doing? How am I doing? Yes, yeah, so that's our director, and it seems like the Bluetooth works real fine. All in all, the drive is, how would I describe it? It's sublime. You can, can barely hear anything from the outside. You're definitely locked out, or locked in from the outside world, thanks to the insul sound insulation. The NVH, you can barely hear the engine note, and it's great. I would definitely recommend this car to anyone who's looking for some sort of luxury, some sort of luxury, sportiness, and refinement in their next car purchase. And who wants to be different? For those who want to be different, go for the MG6. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. So what do I really think of the MG6? It's got a great interior. It drives great. Interior, awesome. With those red leather seats, they're quite supportive. And that power delivery, oh my goodness, that seven speed dual clutch transmission makes use of all that power quite efficiently. And even if it does have six to seven kilometers per liter, it's fine. You'd be able to use that power to get from A to B and the occasional C, D and E. So what's it gonna be? How does the MG6 stack up to the rest of the competition? So we're gonna give it a Phil Kutcher grade. First off, practicality. Well, it's got a lot of space in the inside. As you've noticed, even if I was sitting behind myself, I had a lot of leg room. The only problem is that with the rear sloping that way because of it's a fastback, headroom is quite limited for my five and 10 and a half frame. So I'd give it practicality three out of five. When it comes to aesthetics, the MG6 dominates. It's a fastback design, so it's different from the rest of the vehicles out there. You can actually stand out in the sea of compacts, so it's got 18-inch wheels, so that doesn't come standard with all the other vehicles. You have to go for the top-of-the-line trim, which costs so much more. The front end, it's amazing. It may get inspiration from the other compact cars out there, but it doesn't do so without looking like it ripped off from a lot of them. So for aesthetics, we're gonna give it a four out of five. Performance from the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine is amazing. 166 horsepower, 250 Newton meters of torque. That kind of torque you can only get from a diesel, but this one is a 1.5 liter gasoline engine. You get the best of both worlds with that seven speed dual clutch transmission, which is the wet type, and I love the wet type. It's not jerky at all. 
So for performance, we're gonna give it a five out of five. Another area where the MD6 totally dominates is its value for money. It's kitted to the nines with everything imaginable. MG threw everything but the kitchen sink with it. And the top of the line trophy variant, get this, 1,188,000 pesos only. With that kind of money that you get the uh, top of the line Vios, you get the entry level compact cars like the Civic, the Elantra, and the Corolla Altis. But for that much money, you get the top of the line of what MG has to offer. And it is amazing. Value for money, a solid five out of five. Before I give it a Phil Koch score, let me explain a few things. After explaining the uh, aesthetics, the performance, the looks, the value for money, it's damn near perfect. There's only one thing holding the MG6 back. And it's that it's an MG. It may have a 100,000 kilometer warranty, five year warranty, and 10,000 in terms when it comes to PMS, but the fact that it's an MG will hold people back. And maybe that's a question that we have to ask ourselves. Will we hold ourselves back from getting one of the, mo one of the best value for money compact cars out there just because it's a so-called Chinese car? We have to remember it's an MG, it's a British brand. Lamborghini is owned by VW, Volkswagen, a German brand. Do we call Lamborghini a German car? No, it's an Italian car. When it comes to everything else, the MG6 is definitely a good value for money car, good performance, good looks. So for my Phil Kocha score, you'll be surprised. I'll give the MG6 a five out of five. Fight me in the comment section below. In the market for an MG6, I know I am, but you know what to do. Head over to philkacha.com. What is philkacha.com? philkacha.com is your portal for all your car buying and selling needs. So if you want to search for the MG6, all you have to do is head over to our website, philkacha.com, go in the search button, search for one of our dealers. MG is actually one of our trusted dealers, and I'm sure they're gonna give you one of the best deals that they can find for you. Just make sure that you tell them philcotcher.com sent you, okay? So there you have it, folks. Another review done. The MG6 is in the books. I think I'm in love with this car. I'm going to go ahead and check out this brand new car in red in one of the MG dealers. I'll contact philcotcher.com and see what they have in store for me. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Guys, we read your comment section every day. Don't think that we disregard them. So if you like your video, if you hate them, don't be shy. Write everything down below in the comment section and we make sure that we get everything from them. Make sure that all our videos in the future will improve. It's a process and we're glad that all you guys, haters and likers, are with us during this process. Thank you for watching philkasha.com. Once again, it's your boy Leroy. See you next time. Peace.